bet you have another beautiful home someplace else, don't you? What? Another home. Um, you got one? Uh, sure, yes. Where exactly? Um, Claremont. In Claremont. And so, which neighborhood? Well, why? I'm oh, sorry, we're not... Um, comfortable telling you that, Bob, right now. You're not comfortable telling me that right now. I don't understand. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get us some water. Are you gonna come? Sure, let's get some water. Sure, Bob. Bobby and I just want to know what it is you all do to be like this. We want this. Like what? Like you. So, duct tape really can do pretty much goddamn anything, isn't that right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, this is true. <laughs> no, nobody's going to know what we're talking about, but let me just, at least until they see the film, but let me just say I was duly impressed. Who knew there were medical applications? Definitely, you can do anything. <laughs> Make clothes out of it. Duct tape. <laughs> so, tell me how this idea came about, because I've talked to people like this, the type who seem to want to eat you alive, and I've always felt that if their id got really engaged, what happens in the film would pretty much be the outcome. So where did this come from? Jeremy? Well, uh, we, the, it's, it started originally, we went on a road trip from Vancouver to LA, and we, uh, we kind of knew we wanted to come up with an idea along the way. We stopped in, I'm sorry if you're from Oregon, anyone, but we stopped in some weird small little towns on the way, they were the same kind of thing that really kind of made an impression on us, the way that some of the people look, looked at us there and just like, they're very small, interesting little towns and that kind of had spurred, spurred the idea and then we, we, were, we were fans of, you know, doing the identity theft thing and making something about, you know, about people and the obsession of perfection and that that, that perfection doesn't really exist and just people realizing that for themselves. So. Mm -hmm. Identity theft is usually nice and neat and pretty impersonal. This is <laughs> not. We, we, where did you, or how did you add the teeth to, uh, to the concept? Uh, well, we were inspired by films like with friends like Harry Who Needs Enemies and uh, Funny Games and uh, Strangers. And uh, the thing about those films that I wanted to add to was this sort of teeth, I guess you'd call it. <laughs> adding the identity theft angle and adding this sort of more um, humane element uh, to, and giving them justification, their own justification that um, the, the victims can understand. Mm -hmm. Even though they're fighting, they can understand. And so, um, yeah, so that was sort of the, the start of it. And then it just continued on from there and so well from there. <laughs> Do you have sympathy for Bob and his family, quote unquote family? Absolutely. Yeah. We were just we were just talking about that, and I think the innocence that Rachel had brought such an interesting uh, interesting dynamic to it that I think someone actually came up to Rachel after the screening and told her that they wanted to hug her, and they, <laughs> they you know they actually had felt bad for her, which is a hard thing to pull off when it's such extreme and violent you know circumstances. So he's definitely you know. An odd fellow, though. So <laughs> yeah, and the same with Bobby. Yeah, yeah, there yeah. wasn't. Uh, I mean, I don't know if innocence is the words, but there's naivety. Yeah. There, um, there was. Yeah. It there was, was like, definitely sympathy. And his motivation seems so. To, he, it's as awful of what he was trying to achieve. His motivation came from a good place. For as from in his mind, he was like trying to protect his family and trying to make things better. It was awful what he was doing, but you know, from his motivation, kind of made it so you could feel for him. Of, a little, a little bit. <laughs> I hope. So, Josh, you wrote this, Jeremy. You directed. 
I'm an auteurist, so I tend to think, you know, the director is the man. What, what happened when there was a difference of opinion? <laughs> was it arm wrestling or dad? Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, leg wrestling, usually. Leg wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, we were, I think we, you know, and there were so many more than just the two of us, you know, Justin, the producer is so involved as well, as well mm -hmm. as the executive producers yeah, and the, the actors. actors. And it's, it's just, just like, such a collaborative. That was one of the greatest things about it, you know, it's, it wasn't like one of those like shroud of sequence to be around the monitors or anything. It was, there was, everyone was up there involved. And so we never, I don't think we ever had any serious disagreements. And there was, there was healthy disagreements, but that, they were all ones that made the film better, I think. So. Yeah. There was conflicts of interest. I feel like we had handled it long before we got there. <laughs> and so once we got there, it was just this extreme collaboration with Absolutely. the actors. And, yeah. One more final question. Has the Republican National Committee been in touch with you about using this film as a metaphor for Obama's uh, level field <laughs> economic policy? This is what they're going to do to you? No, 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 they, have not been in touch. no they haven't. Okay. No, not yet. Just, you may be hearing from them anytime soon. Then, <laughs> then you can answer for it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll give them Josh's number. Yeah. Thank you very much for Thank talking you. with Thank us. You guys.